Hi. We previously already introduced filter data sources, but it can also be interesting to also filter the child data sources. So let's go to an example. In this example, I have a bunch of uh, opportunity products that I group by um, the hardware type or software type, so the family we call them. And we, of course, want to first uh, show or hide the entire section if there is actually hardware products or software products or so on. Uh, and then, of course, when there are software products, I only want to have, uh, yeah, repeat all the software products linked to that, uh, linked to that family and not all the other products as well. And, uh, and yeah. So, um, to actually do that, you, uh, there is multiple options, but one of the options is that you, for instance, create filter data sources. So in a filter data source, you might say, well, I want all the data from my existing data source, in this case, uh, product families, but I want to filter them on hardware. So this would mean that you don't have to create new data sources in Salesforce. Yeah? Uh, you can just have one data source yeah, with all the data and then actually create extra data sources in the configuration scheme that will filter that. The reason to do that is performance. So a data source in Salesforce might take half a second uh, for uh, all the data to be retrieved via the data source. And when we filter them, then of course this goes much faster. In this case, our product families has also uh, a list of all products that are linked to these families. So all the products to the uh, link to the opportunity that is actually in uh, uh, the case in this uh, example. Um, and of course, what we want then to know if we are filtering on the product family hardware, we also make sure we have all the hardware childs linked to that. In this case, it's not really required to have an extra condition because we know that uh, only the uh, only the uh, records linked to their parent uh, via the uh, parent gradient field and the grouping field will actually be taken into account. But for instance, what you can do is say, well, uh, we might have some hardware products, but I only want to show the hardware products that have, let's say, um, a quantity over a bigger than one. Okay, so in this case, if I would now generate the configuration uh, or the doc config, it would actually show both hardwares. But if I create an extra condition here and I say, well, the quantity has to be um, bigger than one. Okay, let's save this. Then if I now regenerate the, uh, the document, it might, it will only show one. So only the one with 12. Okay, let's do the exact same thing for the software. Uh, I'm going to already give you a sneak peek. There is no software product here. So I expect everything from software to be to, uh, to disappear. So step one is I'm going to add a data source. Um, so I'm going to create a filtered data source and I'm going to uh, call it filters. So that's a naming convention I'm going to use and I'm going to say family software. Okay, the data source that I'm going to use is the product families and the um, <clears throat> the filtering that I'm going to do is it has to be one equal uh, one dash uh, software. Okay, so that's the family name. Okay, that's step one. And now in step two, of course, we also want to create a child data source because we want to make sure that we only uh, take the ones that filtered um, hardware products. So this is then software products. Okay, the data source to use is of course child data source. In this case, I'm gonna uh, take, put in no conditions. So it will only take the fee, uh, the records, sorry, the records that are actually linked to the parent uh, defined in the parent data source by the filter of the parent data source. Okay, all looks good. So uh, that's already my data sources. Now let's go back to our document and uh, pick up some uh, merge fields. So I have the has a software merge field and I'm gonna add a condition here saying, well, it's the has software. In this case, I used a content controller. Uh, the data source is gonna be my filtered family software one and the merge field is has software. Of course, I want to remove the merge field and there is no need to put any uh, extra uh, filters criteria here because we already did that in the data source. Okay, let's already save this. Um, 
And let's take a look if I now generate the documents, what would happen with this software section. As you can see, the software section is now nicely gone because there are no software products. Let's continue one more, just uh, because it's that simple to do. Uh, let's create a filter data source. Let's call it filters. And I want to filter now on, let's say, the, um, let's go back to the Word documents, the, uh, the other uh, or the installation. So if I go to the installation, it's called for installation. I'm going to copy this. Now I'm going to say my data source uh, my, is this one. The, the filter is family equals for installation. Okay. And I'm going to create a child one as well. So the child one is going to be called filtered. Um, this is installation products. Yes. Okay. And this is my data source and I don't need any extra. Uh, and extra conditions. So now again, we're going to go back to the documents, take the field has installed just to make sure that it first checks that if there is an installation product that will actually uh, show that otherwise it should re remove everything. Content controller, the data source is going to be uh, installation products. Uh, no, sorry, family. Oh, I see that I have to rename that one because I uh, so I'm going to rename that one. Okay. And then I'm going to say merge field only for the uh, remove action. I don't need a merge field and I'm quickly going to rename this one into saying installation. Okay. So now it should have installs um, and then under installs, of course, what I now need to do <coughs> is uh, say that I want to repeat this row for every installation product. Okay, then the installation product in this case, it's a table row. Uh, we're not going to use a parent data source. We're actually going to say it's going to do the installation products. And then, well, this is the merge field that it should look for. And then as a child, we of course going to fill in now the product names here. Uh, now we can use the product data, so uh, the, the parent data source because we're going to use a single and it's the product name. And then the merge field is product installation. Okay, let's do one more merge field and then I think everybody would understand what we're actually doing here. And then we're gonna trace this out. So now this quantity install, uh, that's the quantity, that's a number field. So I'll say I don't want any digits after uh, no, uh, no decimals um, in this uh, format here. And then it should be it, let's save. Okay, saving uh, did not throw any errors, so that's a good thing. And let's give it a try. So I would rem I would expect one installation product. Exactly, I have one installation product. The install price we didn't fill, so that looks okay. And now if I would remove my installation product here, um, this is the installation product. If I would remove it from my opportunity, Yes, okay, then if I rerun it, it shouldn't show any installation products. As you can see, all is gone. So that looks uh, perfect. So there is, uh, of course, the hardware is there. Uh, the software has been removed. The uh, installation products have been removed exactly as the configuration uh, said it that it uh, should work. So that's a use case for filter data sources. If, of course, if you have more complex, um, if you have more complex data models, you can also use these. This is just an example, but they are, can be used in many other use cases where you might say, well, I have products that I want to group by uh, when they are of a certain type or a certain group or a certain amount, all of that is possible. And then of course, uh, what you can also do with these products is actually use these um, settings to see how many actual, uh, how many records there actually are in other criteria. These are uh, and these are actually uh, complete data sources that you can use as other data sources as they would come from uh, from Salesforce. So we can call them actually first citizen data sources uh, when it comes to the configuration. These are actually seen as full-fledged data sources.